Giving to the poor is practicing our righteousness. It's a fruit of our righteousness, which was a gift to us from God. It's one gift leading to another gift. You see, now th this may very well, the con we go through, we've been doing a study of the Sermon on the Mount for weeks and weeks and weeks and maybe months. Mm -hmm. And you know what? They go on for years as far as I am concerned. But remember, this took place in a very short, relatively short period of time. So sometimes we kind of get disconnected, right? He's saying, you know, we're to give when we give to the poor. But he started this entire Sermon on the Mount with a statement that's connected to this. And that was, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5, 3. You see, we have previously looked at the fact that it all belongs to the Lord whatever it is. Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's, all that it contains, the fullness thereof. It's all the Lord's. You know, we say, okay, he owns all the cattle on a thousand hills. Why not? He owns every cattle on any hill. It's all his, the fullness of it, okay? You have to understand that anything that we possess to give, we only have stewardship over because it has been entrusted to us by the owner, God. Let me, let me give you an example. If somebody gave you a check, okay, somebody writes you a nice, generous check, and you take it to the bank to cash it, the bank teller cannot boast of his or her generosity when they hand you the cash. They'd only been entrusted with what belonged to another, and that other had instructed them to give it to you. If that teller was to take credit for the money just given to you, they would have then been acting as if it were money that they had handed over mm -hmm. that belonged to them. And acting is the key word there because that's exactly what an actor does. He pretends to be somebody or something that they are not. Thus, Christ's statement about the hypocrites. The word hypocrite literally comes from the Greek word, which means an actor. Mm. Okay. When, not if, you give, it is not you who are giving, but the Lord who dwells and works within you. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Colossians, Colossians 3.3 3. You know, we're moved by the Spirit of God. It's God who is doing the work in you. So it's God who's giving the gift. That's why you can't take credit for it. You're no more than like the bank teller. You're passing along something that's been entrusted to you that belongs to somebody else at the instruction of the person that it belongs to, the person, the God, the Almighty. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you're not giving to be seen by men, then you will not care. In fact, you'll rejoice that only your Heavenly Father has seen what you've done. That's right. Okay? Because if you seek the approval of men, you will have received your reward in full. Paul said that. If, he said, if, I'm, if I'm still seeking the approval of men rather than the approval of God, I cannot be a bondservant of God. All right? So whatever you, let me say that again. Whatever you give, you have received. Now, Paul makes that perfectly clear, and he explains the ministry that he and the other apostles and Apollos had. Here's what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And I'm going to, well, I'll, I'll let you know. It says, let a man regard us in this manner as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. In this case, moreover, it is required of stewards that one be found trustworthy. For who regards you as superior? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it? He proclaimed that he, Apollos, and the others were servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Think about ownership, stewardship, and possession. God entrusted and gave dominion to Adam over the earth, but it still belonged to him. He gave him stewardship and he gave him possession, but God retained the ownership. Now, that should be a blessing to us because remember what Jesus said. He said, he talked about the, that enemy, the adversary, who comes as a, a thief, you know, to steal and kill and destroy. But he said that I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. John 10, 10. He has given each of us a gift. And he has given us an abundance of that gift, whatever it is, for the common good.